Soul Knowledge prides itself in discussing the world's most iconic and impactful sneakers. This shoe is the Reebok Insta Pump Fury and has truly earned its position as an elder at the table of the best. Check it out. Pump, pump, pump. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Soul Knowledge, the home of the sneaker story and the home of sports culture insights. I'm your host, Bernie Wickham, and I am the sneaker evangelist. I gotta share with you guys that during the late 90s, I was a Reebok nut. There was just so much that the brand was pushing out that was catching my attention in that innovation. The DMX story I loved so much. DMX Run 10, The Six, Allen Iverson's The Question. Then Reebok did the Electrolyte story with an ultra lightweight midsole versus outsoles. Loved that completely. Um, then in the Hexalite story, I was a fan of the Hexacuter, the Mud Dogger. Some of these I couldn't even find images for right now as I was planning this episode for you. But so many great shoes actually just lost in history. And as the brand just started cooling down in the late 90s, all of my love for Reebok actually got stuck in the 90s and that's where it stayed. I gotta tell you that at the end of this episode, I'm going to reveal six reasons why I believe you should refocus your attention onto the Reebok brand. Something special is happening at that space. But for now, let's get into the story. Our story starts with a guy by the name of Paul Fireman who gets the rights to Reebok in North America. And in doing so, he actually puts together a team of free thinkers and innovators to work on new technology for the brand in a very competitive space. He labels the group the Advanced Technology Group and makes a secure space for the guys to just think and churn ideas. In 1989, the Advanced Technologies Group comes up with an idea that they go to market with and it's called the Pump. Used in the basketball category, it is inflatable bladder that sits across the forefoot and can be inflated or deflated to the specification of the athlete. Now this inflation and deflation actually makes the foot fit more securely inside of the shoe with your very unique specifications of your feet. Now because two feet are not the same, not even your own, this was a great idea for fit within the basketball space. The pump is born. The moment which gave the pump absolute credibility was 1991's NBA slam dunk competition in which D Brown pumps up his sneakers just before every dunk that he plans. Pump it up in preparation, the crowd loved it and they got themselves asking, is it the shoes? The pump wins. Now the Reebok lead, Paul Fireman, decides to employ a guy by the name of Steve Smith. Now don't forget this name because he's quite critical in my six reasons to believe a bit later on. But Steve Smith takes over the leadership of the Advanced Technologies Group. He rebrands it later to the Reebok Advanced Concepts. Yes, I've got the hat to match. But within his leadership, they create the cushioning technologies called Hexalite. And Hexalite would later be used in the Instapump Fury. See where this is going. Here's how it all pulls together. Steven Smith and his team at Reebok Advanced Concepts are given a briefing to create a lightweight and minimalistic runner. The first thing that they do is they remove the bladder from the Reebok pump and they use that bladder as the primary upper for the shoe. That's why this aesthetic has got such a rugged edge because it has taken it from the bladder itself. Beyond that, the guys start cutting back pieces where the bladder is not particularly needed to cut back and make the upper even lighter. The next piece in lightening up the shoe is that they've taken a decoupled outsole and midsole concept by getting rid of this entire middle piece and creating two separate pieces, forefoot and rear foot, completely independently of one another, hence reducing that weight. But then keeping the whole structure completely rigid with this graphite plate, which keeps things nice and stable, but does not add to the weight at all. In the rear foot is the recently introduced Hexalite technology, also keeping things nice and light. And the final result is a shoe that is 
part of the lightest within its category within 1994 when the shoe was released, but also the most iconic shoe of its time and a shoe that is so far ahead of its time but even in today's day and age you look at it and think this is still a futuristic looking piece of footwear. For that reason is why it has become so iconic and deeply set into popular culture and the reason why this is a must have for every sneaker collection. The version that I'm holding this evening is actually the 25th anniversary version of the Instapump Fury. This is the prototype version in the original colorway. This is pair number 231 of 1994 or 1994, the year that it was launched. Um, and this has actually been made available to Soul Knowledge by Jason Vessels. So you may have heard that name before because he is a continuous contributor to Soul Knowledge. So Jason, thank you. And then also the second shoe that Jason has made available for us is the Instapump Fury Road, also known as the What the Camo. What a legend. This is the six reasons why Soul Knowledge believes you should keep your eye on the Reebok brand. Number one, the amount of collaborations that Reebok has been doing in the recent past is monumental. A lot of work that's been done with a lot of key people and that's telling us that Reebok is looking at just repositioning itself in an authentic space. Number two, Reebok has a massive line of back catalog product that is just amazing. Shoes from the vault which can come out, be reissued and has been reissued is a good sign of a solid legacy. Number three is rebranding. Reebok have recently announced that the Vector logo, which is this logo, the original logo, is the logo that the brand is going to be moving forward with um, in the future. The Delta logo, which is this one over here, is going to be canned. Listen, it's never spoken to me. I've never ever owned a product with the Delta logo and I'm so glad that Reebok is going to be moving forward with the Vector logo. Number four, if you did not know, Reebok is actually a brand that has been owned by Adidas. And because that is the case, there's a beauty or the benefit of shared resources. Now, I've mentioned a guy by the name of Stephen Smith who created the Instapump Fury. He's the same guy that's going to be working on Kanye West's Yeezy line. Now, with that shared resources, that is a benefit that the guys can leverage off one another. Number five is shared technologies. You will notice that in the next reiteration of the Instapump Fury, Reebok have actually used Adidas's Boost technology in the midsole itself. So that's going to be a great tie-in where you've got two iconic brands and Boost technology. If you would have remembered my Boost episode, it would be a special thing to look forward to. Finally, and most importantly, is future product development. This is the Zig Kinetica. Beautifully laser cut detailing on the upper and also a seamless construction in the way that this upper has been bound together. When I look at this, it just gives me a sense of confidence in where the brand is going. Yes, it's got a great legacy, but also with this in line, it's telling us that there's a good future ahead of it. And that love that I had lost for this brand in the 90s has actually just been dusted off and been put into a new place. So I'm very optimistic about what Reebok is going to be doing. I hope you too are going to be keeping your eyes on the things that I've mentioned. And uh, this is an exciting story. Just another brand, more sneakers to wear. How's that going to hurt anybody? So guys, thanks for tuning in. This has been another special episode. I look forward to sharing something more with you guys in the future. A lot of love.